<laughs> you know, it's going to be ironic. The people who um or, or who rail against the whole binary model of uh, biological sex and human beings, the ones who say that's big, you can't just put people into two categories. They're going to put people into two categories. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. Trump, transphobia, and trepidation. Folks, this is going to be one of those videos where you could just listen to this like it's a podcast or a radio show, just though I let you know. All right, folks, so waking up, I'm sure you've seen the headlines, however true they may be or misleading. Apparently, Trump is saying that the cost of having trans people in the military is just too high for the medical procedures, etc. Not central to this, but related to this, is the following issue which Tabitha and I are going to discuss in this video. There seems to be a disproportionately higher rate of psychological issues amongst trans people. Now, red flags just went up for a lot of you right now. A lot of you think, oh, we're transphobic. We we are now saying that being trans is morally wrong and evil. A conclusion that makes absolutely no sense, but many of you will make nonetheless. It's predictable. I guarantee there will be people who say that you are saying that people who are trans are evil because you're entertaining the notion that perhaps it's a disorder. It makes absolutely no sense, but there are a number of factors that go into why people are going to be pushed into feeling that way. Well, anyway, let's get into it. So, waking up today, we can all see headlines. Whatever the actual details, the factual details may be, this is what I want to say in reaction to this. You have people who fight for LBGT rights, people who support LBGT rights, I do. When I lived in New York, I used to march in the gay pride parade because I really do believe in rights for gay people, trans people, etc. So you have people who fight for or at least support LBGT rights. And they don't all agree on the actual details of all the things. Okay, so there were trans people who were in favor of Bill C-16 in Canada, which actually passed, which makes it uh, unlawful to not use a person's preferred gender pronoun. So that's compelled speech, that's beyond censorship, that's people forcing you to say things rather than just simply stopping you from saying certain things, okay? The people who are in favor of that uh, apparently are a minority of the trans quote-unquote community. A minority of people who stood for LBGT rights because most of us uh, realize that's not actually in service of T people or any people. Not LBGT or cis people or straight people or anything. Okay? There are people who fight for trans rights, amongst other things. They don't all agree on everything. There is a small minority who are the most vocal amongst people who fight for LBGT rights, who have the most narrow-minded and totalitarian view on things. They want to force people to say certain things and not say other things, etc. and so on. They're the minority within the minority, but they're the most vocal and they kind of lead everybody else along. Those people will argue and they'll convince a lot of other people that the following is true. You're either with us, who are not just a small minority who are most vocal within the community, but we represent everybody in the community, which is not going to be true. And then there's everybody else. So if you're not within our particular camp or view of things, then you are transphobic. So they're going to be calling people who are trans or people who are gay, etc. Be willing to have the following conversation. Is there an issue with mental and emotional health amongst trans people? Disproportionately higher or not? Let's discuss this. Those people will be branded as transphobic, people engaging in hate speech, homophobic, and etc. simply because they're willing to discuss the possibility that in the trans community, quote unquote, or amongst trans individuals, there is a disproportionately higher rate of mental, psychological, emotional illness. And also, let's say people who question whether or not uh, somebody should be giving their child hormones to alter their gender, you know, so that they can virtue signal to the world. <coughs> Angelina Julie. You'll get people who say, well, maybe we should wait until a child becomes 18 and can be able to give informed consent before doing that. Those people will be viewed as being hateful. Now, keep this in mind, okay? We all, as a society, we all agree that sex with underage people is wrong. And the rationale, or I would say the real, very concrete reason why, is because if you're not at a certain level of intellectual and emotional maturity, you cannot give informed consent. Uh, you could give consent, but not informed consent. And what does that mean? That means, okay, let's say if you're super duper drunk and somebody asks you, hey, can I have your car for keeps? Can I just have your car? 
you know, because you're in a lovey attitude and you say, yeah, man, you can have the car. You know, the next day they have to give it back because you were just blind drunk. You were not giving informed consent. OK. And the same thing goes with date rape. If a girl is so drunk that she doesn't even knew, know who just walked into the room, you know, and took off her clothes, but she's still going, uh, uh, you know, she doesn't know what's going on because she's so drunk. Did she give consent? Yeah, because she's having sex and enjoying it. Did she give informed consent? No. Okay? So that's sexual assault. So one must give informed consent. In other words, you can't just ha say, <laughs> oh, that child consented to do that with me, and therefore it's okay, because depending on what it is, if it's drugs, if it's drinking, if it's sex, certain other things, it doesn't matter if they consent, because they can't give informed consent. But here I am going off on a tangent, but okay, so my point here is that we all realize some people can't give informed consent, and that includes children. We all understand that. But then suddenly, if you're far left enough, you don't understand that when it comes to, say, changing a, a, a per altering a person's gen or child's gender with hormones. All of a sudden, it's okay if a child says, Mommy, Daddy, I want to become a man or I want to become a woman. Suddenly, it's okay to give them very serious uh, biologically, psychologically, and emotionally altering drugs especially when they're developing. And what I'm saying is that if you're increasingly so, if you're somebody who makes the argument I just made, that perhaps it's not ethical to give children hormones like that. Oh, you're transphobic. You hate gay people. You're a right-winger. You're a Republican. Therefore, you're a Nazi and etc. yada, yada. You're not. The thing is, is that a child cannot give informed consent. All right? They're a kid. How do we discern whether or not you're talking them into this mindset like how you all bitch about little boys being masculinized by giving them G.I. Joes and trucks and things like that. And little yeah. girls are feminized by giving them Barbie dolls and shit. How do we know you're not doing the exact fucking opposite to your child yeah. and confusing them gender-wise to make them think that they're trans? And then you're giving them now hormones yeah. without their informed fucking consent because they've been confused. So giving them all hormones, right? that's okay, but having gendered toys is not yeah i think <laughs> i think it's like this when the kid is 16 years old yeah okay at 16 they can kind of have an idea of what they want if they are die hard i want to be a fucking girl right or i want to be a fucking boy yeah then start the proceedings with a psychologist to make sure because now it's also a fad amongst junior high and early high school kids yeah. to pretend to be something they are not. Right. And here's the thing. Once you start down that fucking road, it is really hard to turn your body back around. Yeah. You essentially will fuck yourself up. Yeah. Because your body's not meant to have those hormones. You're making permanent life-altering decisions right? for a person who is not old enough to consent. Exactly. So when they are 16... Start the psychological process where you have them speak with a therapist. So the therapist can discern whether or not this child truly is a trans individual. Because they there are markers. Alright? There are things that the kid will describe. Sensations. Other things that only a therapist will be able to understand. Not you, the parent. Yeah. You don't fucking know. Are you a psychologist? No, you're not. Right. You don't know that there's a high case of body dysmorphia involved here. Yep. And how to fucking gauge it. Alright? So, that's one of the prime flags to know if the individual is trans. How do they see themselves in the mirror? What does it cause as a reaction physically within their body? Do they feel, you know, disgusted looking at themselves? Because it's not right? Well, then you most likely have a trans child. But only a therapist can tell you this for fucking sure. Right. Only a therapist can help guide the kid into the correct mindset and prepare them for what the fucking hormones are going to do to them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then at 18, I think it should be legal to start giving them the hormones. Till then, they need to be in therapy till they've reached 18. Right. Okay? That way they have... Two years, from 16 to 18, you know, 16, 17, and 18, they get to do the actual transfer. But through 16 and 17, that's two years of therapy that they're going to need to figure themselves out before you throw a cocktail of fucking hormones on top of it.
And we've had this discussion before. It's yeah. not a small amount of hormones. No. They start them out in the extreme hormonal level. Right. That's why these kids go crazy. Yeah. You have trans that are just like, they join Antifa and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're just screaming obscenities into the wind. Oh, yeah. Because they're hormonal and they don't know how to deal with it. No one told them it was going to be that hard. Because it's not politically correct <laughs> to get to inform them that, listen, first of all, there seems to be a disproportionately <laughs> higher rate of emotional trouble mm -hmm. with trans people. Because and of that also, particular reason, the hormones. No one prepares them for that. I would say that's a big reason too, but I would I would not be surprised if some of that is even um, something other than. In other words, like as you say, they have body dysmorphia. They feel like mm -hmm. they're in the wrong body, okay? So that in and of itself, I think, is going to at least correlate, if not be the causal factor, or at least related to thereof, emotional trouble, even before the hormones hit. Mm-hmm. But I'm just speculating. I haven't studied the literature on this um, because, you know, it's not politically correct to do so. Even though I took a course in psychology, in which we should have done, we should have studied the yeah. literature on that. But no, it's not politically correct to do so. Okay? Mm -hmm. And like you said, for that reason, like you said, it's going to hit them by surprise. Yep. You know, they're, they're thinking, oh, it's um, it's going to be a happy time. Uh, you know, I'm uh, whatever. I'm Angelina. Uh, I'm the golden child of Angelina Jolie. And I'm going to show the world how wonderful this is going to be. And then all of a sudden, six months into it, oh, my God, nobody told me yeah. that I was going to be suicidal. And I want to yep. eat, you know, I want to rage on people. And I want to do this and that and the other thing. Because it's not politically correct. So that goes back to my theme, which is that. You're going to see everybody split into two different camps, even though they're not actually in two different camps. They're in many different camps, but it's going to be split between people who are going to walk the very thin, narrow, hardline PC um, narrative, which will exclude the possibility that perhaps there is a higher correlation of mental emotional illness amongst trans people than non-trans people. That's going to be haram. It's going to be something you're not allowed mm -hmm. to say. And then there's everybody else. And then even though in the other group there are going to be people who range from saying I'm for trans rights, I just don't agree with the other people who are more extreme than me, and I think perhaps we need to have a discussion about their mental and emotional health, it's going to range from that to people who actually do hate trans people and let's say want to throw them off a roof or something like that, you know, ISIS and other fundamentalist Muslims, for example. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be christian right-wingers who hate trans people too right yeah and everywhere in between there's going to be a million shades on this issue but they're going to be put into either you are pc and you're totally for trans rights and, and trump's a nazi and he hates trans people or you're a nazi and you hate trans people <laughs> you know it's going to be pushed into those that those two binary <laughs> choices you know it's going to be ironic the people who um or, or who rail against the whole binary model of uh biological sex and human beings the ones who say that's big and you can't just put people into two categories they're going to put people into two categories yep <laughs> oh my goodness it's just like, seriously i i i shit you not what? if you want a better well-rounded group of trans individuals who are for sure trans yes the proceedings should not begin until they are 16, and yep. that is only with their mental health. Their yeah. physical body, no. Till then, they can stuff their bras, tuck them back, <laughs> Whatever. tape them down, put on the makeup, whatever. Dress the best you can to be who you think you are. Do what you feel like you want to do, okay? Yeah. But don't do any drastic changes until you are 18 after you have had a minimum of two years of therapy or have at least discussed it with a therapist. Yeah. All right. I, I recommend at least two years of therapy, but if you can't afford that kind of shit, at least talk to a therapist once. Yep. And also, when so they can kind of help you figure yourself out at least once. By the time you reach 17 in that one year, you're most likely going to be a very different person anyway. Yep. Okay. I've had this rule for myself. I've always wanted to have a tattoo somewhere, but I want it to be really expressive of my core being or something like that, you know? Yeah. My, my modus operandi in ink on my body. But I've made a promise to myself. Every time that I think I want a certain tattoo, I'll design it out, I'll think of it, draw it, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
The rule is sit on it for one year. Don't get it for one year. If after a year you still want it, then maybe. It's never happened. <laughs> Every single year I look back and go, well, gee, that doesn't express my core being anymore. Exactly. <laughs> and you then never know. so something like, okay, you want to be a woman really badly and blah blah blah. Maybe in a year you might realize that you were just so in lust for a female and you're missing a female so bad that psychologically somehow you wanted to become one to fulfill that. Mm -hmm. And then now you have a girlfriend and whoo boy am I glad I didn't become a woman. <laughs> that may happen. Alright? It may yeah. not happen. Okay, you may think you're cisgender now and maybe, you know, you turn 17 and all of a sudden you realize, no, I don't, I'm not cisgender. Yeah. You don't know. Okay, you go through so many changes. And the thing is, you really shouldn't ever stop doing that. Some people just, you know, they get set in their ways very young or by the time they're 30 or whatever. But anyway, uh, you may never stop changing. And as Tabitha says, hormone, that stuff, that... It's intense. Yeah, try to reverse that, especially if you are still forming your body yeah you know at 16 you're still forming your body and your brain your brain continues to develop your neocortex till perhaps mid-20s okay, i want you to think about this okay say you you're a parent and you have what you assume is a trans son he's 13 he likes to dress curiously you know wearing skirts and stuff but you don't realize that at school it is a fad to pretend to be what you aren't because and so he's doing this because he wants to be accepted all right not because he's truly trans but he wants to be accepted so you as a conscientious parent goes oh i want to support my child so you immediately go out and start to give him hormones now around 18 years old he decides he's not trans he's decided that that was just a fad and he's done but the unfortunate thing is, is that he's got man tits now yeah. and no matter how much he exercises the mammary tissue the fat will awesome. never go away. Yeah. Okay? So, you've essentially committed your son to having small tits for the rest of his life. And there are boys that are actually born with this deformity, where they have breast tissue, and when they're teenagers, they feel extremely self-conscious about having to take off their shirt, because they have man tits. And these aren't fat children. Right. These are regular, healthy young boys yeah. and teenagers, but they have small tits, all right? If you give your boy hormones, he's going to grow these, and he's going to have trouble ever wanting to take off his shirt if he's not truly trans, because yeah. you can't hide that. Yeah. His nipples will enlarge a little bit, and it's going to poke out. He's going to have tits. Keep that in mind. That's what I mean when you can't reverse. Yeah. You fuck the pooch. And the same thing goes for a fucking girl who wants to be a boy. Right. She starts getting too much testosterone in her body. She will trigger certain genetic things, like the ability to grow fucking facial hair. Yep. Do you really want your daughter, who was having a fad moment, to have to shave for the rest of her fucking life? Do you really want that? Do you want her hair to go from soft to coarse? You know, do you want different things to change about her physical form that she can't take back? Because once you've opened the door of hormones, you trigger things biologically. Right? We, women have testosterone, but not at that fucking level. That's why we don't grow beards. Yeah. But when you trigger it, you trigger the cells, they'll start to do it. Doesn't matter if you take the hormones away later, you've already triggered them. You open the fucking door, it's gonna keep growing. You know, so be very fucking careful what you do with your child. Some of these things you just can't take back. Two points I wanna make here. Neither one of us are against trans people in any way, shape, or form. We see nothing wrong with, uh, say, gender bending or full on trans or drag queens, all the different kinds of. Uh, non-cis manifestations out there nothing wrong with that whatsoever number one number two saying that something or suggesting that something is a disorder is not in any way shape or form saying that the people with a given disorder are somehow bad people okay like you never hear about somebody saying oh wait you can't say that so-and-so has cancer because then you're being uh, bigoted against that person 
Because then you're saying that person's bad. Somehow you're saying there's something wrong with that person. You know, like there's something morally wrong with that person. It's nothing to do with morality. Uh, and again, I didn't read the literature, so I'm not going to sit here and claim that being trans is a disorder, but I, I kind of think it is. Well, and that doesn't mean that you're a bad person, and it doesn't mean you can't embrace it. We're not talking about, let's say, putting on makeup and going out to the dance club if you're a guy and looking fabulous, you know? We're not talking about that. We're talking about people who actually have emotional and physical ailments because they feel like they're in the wrong body. We have to admit that is a disorder. It's not ease, it's dis-ease. It's a dis-ease for that person. Now, some people, even trans people, are have no problem saying that. It's just that when you then try to say, oh, that, be that means that you're bad. And I don't think people are saying that. I mean, it's a very extreme minority of people who say, oh, if you're trans, you're therefore morally wrong. It's a lot more people being afraid of people saying that if you're trans, you're morally wrong. Yes, there are people who say being trans is a, an affront against God and blah, blah, blah. And most of those people are, well, <laughs> Muslim. But there are Christians and other members of other religions who are against trans people because they feel it's morally wrong. Okay, those people exist. They're not relevant unless they're actually executing people for being trans. And I can guarantee you if somebody's being executed for being trans, it's in a Muslim society. We all have to admit that too because these are facts. But to say that something is a disorder is not to make a moral judgment. But that very small but very vocal minority of trans people and trans rights people are going to make the rest of us feel as if we have to choose between saying, nope, there's nothing wrong with it, and yes, I'm transphobic. Okay? Don't fall for that. Just don't fall for that. Bringing it back around to the headlines about Trump and the military and trans people, here's what you're going to see. Mostly people trying to push it into the black and white. Either Trump is a complete transphobic Nazi for this, or you yourself are a complete transphobic Nazi. Watch it happen, folks. Hold on to your seats. Here it comes. So tell us what you think, folks. Leave us a comment. And one more thing before we go, I want to suggest a video by Aaron the Angry. There is a link below for this video. Military trainees, the new shitstorm. So this way you can get an individual trans person's take on this entire thing. Of course, this is just one person and she only represents herself, but I appreciate her points and I, th I think she has good arguments and good points. Folks, I am considering changing my name and my channel name from Just an Anti-Theist to something else. People have trouble saying, spelling, and understanding Just an Anti-Theist. I may change it to Just Incognito. You know, Just Incognito. Tell me what you think. So, after making well over 100 videos, most of which I've spent days on, and over half a million views over a few years I've made not much more than $100, which I would imagine breaks down to a few cents or maybe even a fraction of a cent per hour. So, I finally signed up for Patreon. There's a link to it right here on my channel banner and in the description below of this video and every other future video. Please consider donating something so that we can continue doing what we do, because at this rate we can't keep it up for long without your donations. Also, if you'd like me to thank you by name for donating, please let me know and I will do so. YouTube is problematic and they would rather not have YouTubers like myself criticizing the left-wing sector of the establishment of which they are a part. You see, I'm always being warned by YouTube, demonetized for not having content that's deemed to be advertiser-friendly. I've had videos taken off YouTube for inappropriate content, and that inappropriate content is always criticism of the far left. And I'm always afraid of my channel being shut down suddenly without warning, so I made a backup channel called Just Infidel. You know, Just Infidel. See the link below for that, please subscribe to it. This will be the backup channel, and also I'll be uploading older videos to that channel that you may want to see for the first or perhaps the second time. So scroll down, click the links for that, subscribe to me also on vid.me, which is like YouTube but without the bullshit. Let's not let YouTube be a monopoly. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll be notified when I upload new videos to YouTube. Also scroll down, click the link, subscribe to me on minds.com, which is like YouTube and Facebook but without the censorship or the clutter and advertisements of the latter. Also there's gab.ai, another social media platform, the one with the frog, Shadley. Also please make sure
make sure you are subscribed to me on YouTube. If you think you've already subscribed and clicked that little bell icon, you may want to check again, especially if you haven't seen a video from me in a few days. People are being mysteriously unsubscribed from channels, some big YouTube glitch, who knows. But many YouTubers are complaining about this, so please go through your subscriptions and make sure you actually are subscribed to your channels. If you haven't seen a video from your favorite YouTube in a while, it may be because you've been unsubscribed due to some glitch or something. Finally, lately on YouTube, a great number of comments are getting lost. For many comments, we don't even get a notification. When we do get a notification, sometimes we can't actually respond to the comment. So I'm not ignoring your comment, there's just problems with the system. Okay folks, thanks for watching. Peace, love, freedom, and equality.